It's no secret that everyone has their moments of self-sabotage and self-loathing, but when it comes to the self-critical INFJ, they seem to get in their own way more often than not. Between extremely high self-expectations and overthinking tendencies, this personality type can be downright self-abusive at times. But how can this happen if they're considered so empathetic and intuitive? Welcome, or welcome back, psychos! Before we get into it, we'd love it if you liked and subscribed to our channel, as well as to click the post notification bell so you never miss a video. Alright, let's get right into the video, starting with number one. Their unrealistic self-expectations. As most of us are, INFJs are faced with a lot of pressure. Being an introvert in an extroverted world, keeping up with societal pressures of success and competition, and being guided with intuition can all wreak havoc on an INFJ's self-image. However, above all of these pressures, there's nothing more daunting for this personality type than the extremely high expectations they set out for themselves. Call it perfectionism or people-pleasing, there's no doubt that almost all INFJs are considered high-achieving and ambitious in all areas of their lives. And although this may seem like a healthy trait that others would strive for, the INFJ's perfectionist nature can sometimes come from the wrong place. Instead of sheer motivation for self-improvement, their hard-working nature and dissatisfaction for their achievements can create the ultimate recipe for self-sabotage. Although, from an outside perspective, the INFJ seems like they are perfectly capable of balancing the high expectations they set out for themselves, they are almost always unnecessarily struggling in at least one area of their lives. Not only that, but unrealistically high expectations also make it difficult for the INFJ to accept compliments from others, because they never truly see how great they are. Number 2. Procrastination Procrastination is a normal human tendency that some people indulge in a little more than others. One of those types of people being the perfectionistic INFJ personality type. At different points in life, depending on obligations, mental and emotional energy, and the actual task being procrastinated, this procrastination-prone type can easily get caught up in their dilly-dallying. To put it simply, there's a fine line between INFJs setting healthy boundaries around their time and energy and taking things a little too far, leading to full-blown self-sabotage. Luckily, unless there's something seriously wrong, an INFJ is able to usually bounce back to their otherwise ambitious selves rather quickly. Mostly because, contradictingly, there's no pill more difficult to swallow for the INFJ than having something not be completed up to par due to their self-sabotaging tendencies. For the INFJ and many other procrastinators, holding off on doing certain tasks is far more than just being lazy. In fact, for the INFJ in particular, usually their avoidance is rooted in fear of failing a fear of change, or not knowing all the details in order to go forward. When an INFJ feels fully confident in their skill set and can accurately see the possible outcome, tasks just seem less daunting. Number 3. They have a strong desire to control the uncontrollable. If you're an INFJ, you'll know personally just how exhausting it can be to deal with a deep-set need to maintain some type of control in every sector of their lives. This judging personality type likes to know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how it's going to be made to happen. While this trait allows the INFJ to be quite organized and able to get things done, the act of obsessing over to-do lists, planners, and schedules leaves little room to actually enjoy the unexpected twists and turns that life never fails to provide. When you know everything beforehand, it takes away half of the fun, but, for an INFJ, it's much more than that. If something doesn't go as planned for the INFJ who has thought of every possible outcome, they'll instantly feel unprepared, and INFJs don't function properly when they're not prepared. Luckily, over time, most INFJs learn to properly step out of their own way and allow life to flow amid uncertainty. Although it's much easier said than done, once an INFJ gets a taste of the free-flowing, in-the-moment lifestyle, it'll be difficult to allow their over-planning selves to get the best of them. 
Number four, they overanalyze every aspect of life. A big part of an INFJ's controlling nature is their overly analytical sense of direction. This introspective personality type spends a great deal of time in their own heads, questioning and ruminating about many aspects of life. While this allows them to understand things on a deep, complex level, it also holds an INFJ back in many ways. INFJs have difficulty taking things for face value, such as love and achievements, which can take the beauty out of the things in life that don't necessarily require a deeper understanding or questioning. For example, instead of an INFJ accepting the love someone has for them, they may be distracted with thoughts such as, I wonder if this love is just infatuation or lust? Do I love them back? What even is love? And is everyone's definition of love different? Do you have to love someone to show them love? Or, this can happen in social settings such as an INFJ overthinking their appearance by wondering if they wore an appropriate outfit, if they have anything in their teeth, if they look too happy or not happy enough, and so on. You get the drift. These thought cycles never end. They only switch from topic to topic. To put it simply, it can be extremely distracting and even upsetting knowing that it's so difficult to just be in the moment and enjoy it, which is one of the main reasons it's so daunting to socialize and put yourself out there to try new experiences. Number 5. They can daydream a little too much. As we mentioned, INFJs have a vast and rich inner world made up of all the things they truly desire in life. And although they're able to put some of these dreams into action, especially when it has to do with helping humanity in some way, this personality type can struggle with unrealistic expectations from people and situations because their inner dreams are so much more preferable than reality. For example, INFJs are known to be hopeless romantics and tend to expect fairy tale like romantic partnerships from their lovers. As we all know, romantic partnerships aren't all butterflies and roses, and when an INFJ is hit with this reality, they may become slightly taken aback and begin wondering if that romance is out there somewhere. So, in other words, it can be difficult for romantic partners to live up to these expectations. Similar to romantic partnership, INFJs can paint an optimistic expectation of an event, new career change, and just about anything else that is yet to come. And often enough, they are merely disappointed to some degree. So, for an INFJ to learn to put down their expectations and predictions in order to better enjoy the reality that is life, they may be pleasantly surprised at how beautiful life can be. Number 6. They are prone to building walls to keep people out. There are no walls built higher than that of people who feel constantly misunderstood. INFJs know this firsthand, and they are incredibly good at masking these walls, making others think they know them, when really, all they know is the front the INFJ strategically puts on. Ironically, the empathetic feeling nature of this rare personality type craves deep connection and meaning within their relationships. Yet, they are so hesitant to open up about themselves to create mutual bonds within their lives. These walls are rooted in the terrifying feeling of appearing vulnerable and, ultimately, getting hurt or used as a result. INFJs know they are incredibly sensitive creatures, from the smallest setbacks to the life-changing betrayals. When INFJs hurt, they really hurt and tend to ruminate for much longer than necessary. While this is a positive trait in some aspects, as it allows for the highly empathetic energy of the INFJ to be closely guarded, it also leads them further away from the friendships, relationships, and new experiences they crave and ultimately need in their lives. A simple example of this would be turning down social events out of fear of being left to stand by themselves in a room full of extroverted, connecting people. This may not seem like wall building, but it is. This is taking precautionary measures for a fear that is most likely not going to happen. And even if it does for a short period, it will probably lead to some incredible connections. Now, this isn't to say that INFJs need to wiggle their way out of their naturally introverted nature and force themselves to go to every social event. But to find a balance is key to having the best of both worlds and getting out of their own way of finding those connections.
Well, psychos, that's it for today's video. Before you go, let us know in the comments below what you think your worst self-sabotaging tendency is as an INFJ. Also, make sure to leave us a like, share with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video.